Hi, hello, and welcome to another declutter. Today we're doing powder products, face powders, blushes, and contours. So let's go ahead and get into it. Okay, I've got my powder bronzers laid out here. I'm gonna start with one that I know I'm definitely keeping. This is a Give Me Glow Cosmetics Bronze Bombshell. Doesn't look very bronze, does it? But it works really well for my fair skin. This is the shade Swim Shady, keeping that. Another Give Me Glow Cosmetics bronzer in the shade Ocean Drive. This one is a lot more cool toned. It works really well for contour. The formula on Give Me Glow powders are absolutely fantastic. Never chalky, a win-win. Another no-brainer for me is the Uma Beauty Double Take Sculpting and Bronzing Powder in White Pearl. I love this for the same reason I love Swim Shady. I was kind of trying to find a dupe for this one and I think it's pretty successful. This used to have the word Oma on it but I've used it so much the embossing is gone and to most people this looks more like a face powder than a bronzer but it works really super fantastically well for getting rid of any reverse raccoon on my very very pale skin. Easy keep. All right, this is the Jane Iredale bronzer. Jane Iredale has some of the most beautiful powder formulas I have just ever graced my face with. This is the lightest shade in their bronzer. This is really expensive, but quality is definitely there. This is a deeper, believe it or not, <laughs> bronzer on me. Hopefully you can see better there. And when I want a little more punch, especially in the warmer months, this is a go-to. Keep, and it's refillable which is really nice. This one is fairly well loved. This is the House Labs bronzer. I have the shade Light Level 1. I really like this gel powder formula. Unfortunately mine kind of hard pans a lot. I'm not sure if that's a common problem with everyone. I am not reaching for this. I was all aboard the Lady Gaga hype train and that's the reason why I bought it but I'm really not reaching for it. So I'm going to make some room in my collection by removing this. Another one that is getting the boot is the Thrive Cosmetics Sun Chaser Bronzer in Rhea. For the price, it's kind of in the meh category for me. And this isn't even the latest packaging. This one is exiting the collection. Moving on to the Flower Beauty Heat Wave Luminous Bronzer. This is absolutely fantastic. I love it so, so very much. Definitely would recommend this shade Sunrise if you are fair as I am. I love the glow, the baked formula. I don't have any cons for this. And keep it. Okay, probably the most controversial bronzer of 2023 <laughs> was the Jones Road bronzer. And the shade Dusty Rose. A lot of people were confused because it definitely looks like a blush shade, but because my skin tone is so pink like this bronzer, this really does a great job of sculpting. You can see the pan that I am about to hit. I think this is fantastic. I'm going to keep it. It really comes in clutch in the winter months when I kind of want that romantic in the snow, but I still have a sculpt to my face kind of look. Keeping. Again, Give Me Glow Cosmetics. This is their dream blush. This is the shade Ginger Spice. I am going to keep this. I have been really loving almost peachy leaning terracottas on my skin lately. I think it's going to work really well as the summer months approach. I am going to keep this for sure. I also have the shade The Plastics, which I expected to be a bright like neon pink, but it's actually pretty neutral. It definitely has like a gold shimmer. So if you're looking for a cruelty-free, more affordable version of the NARS Orgasm Blush, this looks just like it keeping. I have the Kaleidos. I can't remember the name of it because it's not on the packaging. This is a bright, cool-toned pink. You know, it really got us all in 2023. You can see that I have barely touched this. There is another one in my collection that I prefer a little more. I just really wanted to try out the brand Kaleidos, but this blush is not going to stay in my collection. RMS Beauty is not without its controversy. However, I do believe they are under new owners and they're trying to do a rebrand and reintroduction of themselves. So I'm still on the fence about RMS if it's something I want to support. I do have this blush in Hanky Pinky, like a 
warm rosy shade but it has blue and gold like reflect to it. I don't have anything like this in my collection. It almost looks metallic and this too is like a gel formula. Works really nicely on the skin. Definitely packs a punch. And if this is your first declutter with me, I add these little yellow tabs to the watch list. Items, items that I'm not sure if I want to keep, items that I want to give second chances, things like that. So if it comes another time for a declutter and it has a yellow tag, that means it'll be an immediate removal from the collection. I have these three blushes from Well People. And tell me they don't look like hourglass blushes because they do. I have the shade Wild Fig, Hazelnut Harvest, and Guava Twist. I hate how expensive Whale People is. <laughs> it's in Target and on Ulta, but I feel like a lot of people don't try it out because it's in the drugstore category, but I believe these blushes are like $20 a piece. If you can find them on sale, they're an absolutely beautiful formula. Not quite as smooth as an hourglass blush, but definitely if there's a shade of hourglass that you like and you can find it in, in this brand, it's definitely worth checking out. I'm going to keep... <laughs> All three. This is the Persona Super Blush in the shade Bubble. I definitely prefer this shade to the Kaleidos one. It has a touch more warmth. It's less ashy on the skin and for something to be ashy on me that really says a lot. So I am going to keep this because I personally love a pink blush on a redhead. So I'm going to keep the Patrick Ta, she's seductive blush. So neutral, it works for nearly any look, cool tone or warm. I'm gonna keep this for now. I'm gonna add a yellow tag to it only because I've had it for so long and I haven't really put that much of a dent into it. Look closely, it looks new. By the time I get around to the next declutter, if I haven't used it a lot, then it will go. This this buxom blush is a neutral, just barely there kind of blush. This one is a little more warm in person than the Patrick Tall one we just saw. This is in the shade Wanderlust. I feel like buxom is really trying to hang on. <laughs> and it's another one of those brands I'm not sure how long they can sustain the company as a whole, but they do have some iconic products and this is a beautiful blush gonna keep it. Okay, blushes are my weakness. You'll see in my liquid blush declutter that I definitely have a blush problem. And of course, I had to get some House Labs blushes. This one is in Pomelo Peach. It's pretty self-explanatory. It's a peach. <laughs> Again, it has this gel powder kind of hybrid formula that looks really smooth on the skin. I... I might have something from Make Beauty that looks similar. So if I do, I'll decide which one to put on the watch list. So for that reason, I'm gonna just like put it right here in my line of sight. I also have the shade Hibiscus Maze, which is a warm tone pink. I am treating this one the exact same as the peach. I'm gonna see if I have a similar color in a formula that I prefer. Not that this is a bad formula by any means, I just love some others. It's these. <laughs> the Jane Iredale blush. It's got a Neapolitan vibe to it for sure. I can even use this one as just a highlighter and mix these three as the blush. Of course, you can't be really precise because of how small these stripes are. Again, Jane Iredale powder formulas are absolutely fantastic, severely underrated. So I'm gonna keep. I have two hourglass palettes. These were the limited edition animal packagings and I love moths. The snake is really like edgy, which I try to be. <laughs> Their fly palette is unaltered, it is exactly how they sell it. You know, it looks like an hourglass palette. I'm going to keep this. I think I'm gonna put a yellow tag on it, not to get rid of it, but to see what other blushes and highlighters and powders that I have that are similar. I can go ahead and tell you, I don't have any like luminescent setting powders outside of these hourglass ones. It's a pretty good reason to keep. The snake palette is not the snake palette as it is sold. 
It is the lightest colorway, so hopefully that helps. And again, this looks like one of those Well People blushes. This looks like the Guava Twist shade. I do really like this bronzer and also this highlighter. Even if I weren't going to use these on my face, I would keep them and use them as displays because the packaging is absolutely gorgeous. Yellow tag is just to remind me to check for dupes. And this is from Undone Beauty. It is clearly not a bronzer. It's like half highlight, half blush. Yeah, sunset bronzer, but I keep it in my blush collection because that's typically how I use it. And right now I have blushes and highlighters in the same drawer, so... I am going to pass this one along. I don't use it very often. These two highlighters are too deep for my skin tone and I have peachy blushes that I like. So someone else in my family can enjoy this because I am the absolute palest. <laughs> now let's move on to yet another container of blushes. Jeez Louise. Okay, Relactic sent me some of their blushes. This one is in the shade Bora Bora. I would love to be in Bora Bora right now. This is like NARS Orgasm on steroids. This is more like a blush lighter. You know, it has that peachy pink color with a ton of gold reflect. I'm going to pass this along. I just don't foresee myself wearing this and it would look much, much better on someone, someone with a deeper complexion than me. So goodbye. And the other blush I have from them is the Florence Duo. It has a deeper and a lighter shade of blush. Definitely putting this on the watch list. I'm going to keep it for now because it's so small and compact. I have tiny little hands. I'm sure you can't tell, but for traveling, it takes up hardly any space. I have a peachy blush from Mob. This is in M27. Their numbers correlate with when they launched the product. So this is the 27th product that they launched. This is pretty pale and it's not quite as bright as the House Labs one. This one's definitely more neutral. The shade in particular I'm going to put on the watch list. I might have another one that I prefer just like this House Labs one. Let's put it right here with those. This is the new compostable packaging. Is this the same shade? M19? M27? No, but <laughs> they look similar. At least on camera they do. Okay, this one's definitely more terracotta and has a lot more brown in it. Again, I just think someone in my family who has a deeper complexion is really going to just use the mess out of this. So I'm going to keep the compostable packaging and give my family member this packaging. Switch those really quick. Pop them out of the back. And they all have these grooves on them to fit in, like almost like a Lego. <laughs> For the old packaging, they actually have a lip that you lift up before you pop it out. Passing along M19. Simply just pop the blushes in with this new packaging. Okay, tell me this isn't just like screaming 90s, maybe even 80s to you. <laughs> this is the CoverGirl Instant, Instant Cheekbones. I have Purely Plum. This is a super underrated blush from the drugstore. The formulas of this are quite smooth, probably about a medium on the scale of pigmentation. Definitely easy to build up or sheer down. This shade I use as a highlighter. And on top of those blushes, it just really blends in and looks gorgeous. It's like $6 at the drugstore. It's one of those that's actually affordable. Always good to have a drugstore option, so I'm gonna keep this. All right, now let's get into my Make Beauty blushes. These are their Skim Mimetic Micro Suede blushes. I love the formula of Make Beauty powders. I'm just gonna lay them all out here. Okay, ooh, this is gonna be hard. The first one I'm gonna grab is this one right here. This is the shade Amber Glow. Pretty close. The make one is more orangey. That is the House Labs right there. And literally right beside it is the Make Beauty one. On the skin, they look so dang similar. That means I'm gonna keep the one from Make Beauty. It's a smaller business and the formula is fantastic. So that means 
somebody in my family gets an amazing House Labs blush. Crimson Sky. Oh yeah, I use this one a lot more than I expected to. This one is a lot more warm and red, so it's unique. I'm going to keep it. Okay, no, this one's a lot more neutral, so I might not have a blush that's similar to this one in my collection. I'm going to keep Hibiscus Haze. I'm going to pass along this shade, which is in Cosmic. Honestly, I don't know anybody who can wear this. It's so pale that it barely shows up even on my skin. I can build it up, but like I said, I have so many blushes. It's just time to be a little more selective. Mystic Mauve is like the perfect light mauve color. Same with the terracotta. I'm really loving mauve colors on my skin. Let's, Let's get some Celestial Rose action here. Kind of a brownie rose. That is it on the top there. These two swatches right here look very similar. This one is just a touch more pink. This one is Celestial Rose. The one in the middle is that Patrick Ta shade I was talking about. I think the difference is pretty negligible and since I was on the fence about this Patrick Ta one, I'm going to give it to someone else. Keep that. Definitely going to keep this shade. I know I have nothing like it. This is the shade Galactic. I use this one quite a lot. Euros, gonna keep. And then last but not least, this is the shade New Moon. I will be keeping this one too. I know, I've kept a plethora of blushes. This just means I have to get rid of a lot of liquid blushes because I did not do so well with the powders. Let's go for highlights. First up, this is the Undone Nonzer. AKA a highlighter. I love this. I love it so much. I mainly use these three shades, but I can use this one on my lids. This looks so juicy and unlike a powder on the skin. So definitely a keeper. This is the Cali Ray highlight. I have Starlight Beach. Gorgeous, creamy gel powder hybrid formula. This so reminds me of the lit powder highlighter from Milk, Milk Makeup. It is so shiny, so metallic, but hopefully you can tell it's too deep for my skin. When I use, when I use it, I use like such a sheer amount, but it does give me a cast. You can see how metallic that is. It's beautiful. So hopefully someone else can find a way to love it. Okay, we're going with the no-brainer. I'm absolutely keeping the Essence Pure Nude Highlighter. I have Be My Highlight. Affordable. I love the bake formula. It's just A plus, 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 plus. Keeping. This is the M50 Highlighter from Mob Beauty. It really gives that wet look. However, I do like lean towards more almost white highlighters. While this one is gorgeous and amazing, it's time to let some things go, and this is going to be one of them. This has become a quick favorite. This is the Ama Beauty Double Take Skin Perfecting Highlighter in White Pearl. The formula uh, is very similar to the Cali Ray one, actually, but this shade works a lot better for me. Definitely has some hints of pink to it, and on the face, it just looks stunning. This is M49, a rose gold shade. But when I turn to the side, you can see a little bit of a cast. Again, this is going to look amazing on someone who has a deeper complexion. Out it is. This is the Root Pretty White Gold Illuminator. This is stunning. Underrated. Definitely that white highlight that I go for. And it's brilliant. It's one of those, again, when you add setting spray or just tap over it with a damp sponge it looks like skin it's definitely pretty powerful and i just had a thought i want to compare it to the rare beauty well it looks very similar okay dang you can't tell that these are a different highlighter but they are the one on the bottom is the root pretty the one on the top is Rare Beauty. Wow. The only reason I don't use the Root Pretty one much is because, you know, it doesn't have that same viral kind of 
retraction that the Rare Beauty one does. I am going to keep both for that reason. And if you see a dupe reel, don't be surprised because I have just like blown my own mind. <laughs> I also swatched right here the Kaja Beauty Mochi Glow Highlight in Toy Alien. This one definitely looks more like at home on my face than it does on my thumb. <laughs> surprise, surprise. But I think Rare Beauty got some major inspiration from Kaja or vice versa. I'm not sure which one came first. This is an absolute amazing formula. Just look at that mirror kind of shine. Between the Root Pretty one and the Rare Beauty one, I think I am going to pass it. First, I'm going to throw it down and then I'm going to pass it along. Light Trap Highlighter. This one is in the shade Spiritually Complex. This is a bright ass, part of my language, <laughs> purple highlighter. I do quite a few editorial kind of looks and that's where this really comes into play. It's much deeper than the purple I just showed you from Undone Beauty. Hopefully you can see it has a blue reflect to it. I'm putting this on the watch list because I really only use it for those editorial kind of out there looks. All right, watch list it goes. Shade Enter the Glow and it's much more of a champagne kind of color. It actually pulls a little bit peachy on me which is good if I'm wearing a peachy blush. The formula is very similar to the one I decluttered from Callie Ray. This one's just a little bit more manageable for me. I love anything Half Magic. They're a fantastic brand. So this is staying. And this is a shimmer-tastic, peachy pink kind of highlighter. This one's going on the watch list. I want to keep it because it's so unique and because I have that cool tone in my skin and I just naturally flush pretty pink, I think it can look good without looking like super streaky. Gonna keep it. I'm gonna add it to the watch list just because I haven't been reaching for it and I kind of want to give it more of a chance. And then I have Sunstone from House Labs in this color. It's like a champagne with a hint of orange to it. Um, just from looking at it right here, it looks very similar to that Toy Alien shade. I do enjoy this formula, and this is the one I usually reach for when I need a warmer highlight, like warm as in golden. So I'm going to keep this one. I only got rid of 13 items. <laughs> so let's get to the good part and figure out how to organize this drawer. Here are the powder bronzers, highlighters, and blushes in all of their glory. Now I'm going to move on to face powders. This round should be relatively quick because there are a lot less products. Okay, gonna start with the pressed powders. Don't have too many. An immediate get rid of is the Beauty Pie One Powder Wonder Perfecting Powder. If you have ever tried the NARS like crystal setting powder, this is pretty much that. It's a translucent powder with hopefully you can see some luminosity to it. Beauty Pie is just not accessible to everyone. I'm definitely not reaching for this because most of the time my base is already dewy enough and I don't find that this really does anything in terms of staying power for setting. So. Goodbye to this. I am also gonna pass along the Huda Beauty Easy Bake and Snatch Powder. I got the lightest shade, which is Cupcake. Hopefully you can see, and that's after scraping it off, this hard pans like crazy, and it doesn't really do much in terms of my under eyes compared to the loose powder. And it definitely is too heavy for the rest of my face, so I'm going to go ahead and pass this along. I'm going to be keeping my Westman Atelier Vital Pressed Skincare Powder. It's in the shade Pink Bubble. 
Westman Atelier, super duper expensive. I am going to try to use this entirely up. I'm running out of tags, I might have to switch to a different color on the watch list, but staying for now. This is my LYS Triple Fix Translucent Setting Powder. I have the Resilience shade. Hope you can see that little dent. So I have used it quite enough to know my opinion on it. At first I thought this was a dupe for the Charlotte Tilbury powder, but to me this is a little bit more grainy than that. So really not reaching for it. I'm gonna pass it along. Hopefully somebody can use it in my family since it's translucent. I did not realize that the Kosas Air Set powder has a shelf life of two years. That's pretty good. Even though it doesn't look like it, this was rounded over and I've made a pretty significant dent in it. This is a very blurring powder sometimes. It can look a little heavy on my skin. Oh, this is just a cloud set powder. I'm in the shade Airy. Everything in my collection is dirty, so let's not be surprised. I'm, ugh, it kind of pains me to get rid of this, but I'm going to. I'm just not reaching for it. This is the e.l.f. Camo Powder Foundation. I'm in 125C. A lot of people don't like this as a powder foundation and neither do I. I like to use this if I'm doing like a skin tint day and there is just a blemish that will not leave me alone. I like to take a little bit of this and dibby dab over it. I'm going to get rid of this. It has a six month shelf life and I've had it for probably two years. <laughs> it's time to go and I found something that I like better. This is being passed along. That powder I was talking about is the Jane Iredale powder. This is their pressed powder foundation. You can see the rings of the pan on it. I absolutely love this formula. This is the only powder foundation that I can wear with my dry skin that doesn't look like the absolute life has been sucked out of it. It looks so beautiful. It's so easy to just smack on. This is also what I like to use to go over any blemishes. Works fantastically. The shade is a little better than the e.l.f. one. Again, Jane Iredale is refillable. I love it so stinky much. I'm going to keep it. Moving on to the Pure Pressed Mineral Makeup Powder Foundation, Pressed Powder, whatever. This packaging, why do we need like three inches of just acrylic? We don't. Thank you so much. This does have SPF 15 in it, and I do want to give it a chance. I don't I think I've even ever tried this as an all-over face powder, so I definitely want to do that. I am going to put a watch list sticker on it. Pure is another one of those brands that I feel like is on the verge of closing. Unless they get with the times and come out with products that consumers actually want. They're definitely like pulling a page out of Pat McGrath's book where they release new product, um, where they release new eyeshadow palettes that look exactly the same as the ones before on the watch list but I'm excited to really give it more love. The last pressed powder I have is the e.l.f. Prime and Stay Finishing Powder. Julia Adams on YouTube raves about this powder especially for her under eyes and was she ever right? This looks fan stinking fantastic and who would have guessed this is clearly one of e.l.f.'s older products and I really hope they don't discontinue it. It looks amazing under my dry, you know, just old lady under eyes. <laughs> Even around my nose crack and on my chin is like surprisingly fantastic. Keeping it. Easy decision. Got rid of five pressed powders and I kept four. So I'd say that's a win. Those powders... I definitely use more than pressed powders. I know is easy keep is the Silk Naturals Brightening Powder in Chiffon. This is a beautiful powder with a pink tint. It really does well brightening the under eyes and it doesn't make them look creepy. So definitely a win. I'm going to pass along this Fit Glow Beauty Powder. Again, not because it's not good. This is like the most finely milled loose powder that I've ever tried. It 100% is blurring. I'm gonna have to be picky and choosy here, so this one's gonna go. I know, like, my mom or my sister-in-law probably will really like this. My grody <laughs> little mob boring loose setting powder in translucent. Mine's so grody on the cap because the packaging has this little cushion to keep, you know, powder from flying out. 
so I can't really pour the powder into the cap. I have to pour it on top here, which isn't a problem. This too is sustainable in biodegradable packaging. The only issue I have with this packaging is I find it really hard to open and close. So I'll definitely be talking to the team about my experience with it. So blurring, it looks beautiful on dry skin. So I can only imagine it looks even better on oily skin. Fantastic powder, again, that you can feel good about for the environment and your face. Keep for sure. I'm going to pass on my Rare Beauty setting powder in the shade Light. When this first came out, I used it nearly every time I did my makeup, and now I just have things that I am reaching for more. So I'm going to give this to someone else. The Bio Blurring Loose powder from House Labs, I'm going to put a tag on because I honestly haven't used it very much. It kind of takes a lot to impress me with loose powders. So I definitely need to play with this more. Powder from CL is a fairly new product to the market. I love the fact that it has SPF 30. I have the shade 01. I do believe within my heart of hearts that they need a lighter shade. They need like a 00 shade. This powder is beautiful and I wish I could reach for it more, but the color isn't mm, really light enough for me. I cannot use this under my eyes, but I do use it all over the face and down my neck because my hair is so light. I can even use this on my scalp. For all those reasons, I'm going to keep it. This is the Redhead Revolution powder, mineral sunscreen powder, SPF 50. I am going to have to depot this and put it in another container. It has a brush where the product comes through, but <laughs> It's an absolute mess. I want to use this powder because SPF 50 in a powder is pretty impressive. So I'm definitely going to depot this somehow. <laughs> and I will be, again, voicing my opinion to the brand because I feel like I have a good enough relationship with them. This is the Huda Beauty Easy Bake Powder in Cherry Blossom Cake. Viral. Everybody lost their mind about it. Sold out many times. However, I'm going to pass this along because I much prefer the Silk Naturals one, and the Silk Naturals one is like five bucks. The pink on this is pretty dang strong, and for me to say that really says something. It is a pink that's surprisingly too deep for me. So, again, somebody else in my family will probably really enjoy this. Having said that, I am definitely going to keep the sugar cookie shade. This is my favorite loose powder at the moment, especially under my eyes. This is like a straight up white powder. It does provide some brightness and it does blur. It doesn't look cakey or crepey. I love it so very much. And last but definitely not least is the Danessa Myricks Evolution Powder in the shade Pink. I'm keeping this. I really enjoy her Evolution Powder formula and it's another pink powder option. I'm a Danessa Myricks angel, so sometimes I have to make content, and it's great to have this. I love it so much. So I might not even be putting it back in here, but for the clicky clacky sounds, I'll go ahead and fill it up. Okay, this is not their final home. I am quite happy with that. It's definitely much more manageable. Still need to do some work on the blushes, but that is all for this declutter of powder products. There's going to be so many of these. <laughs> so I appreciate you for watching so very, very much. If you like declutters, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel. Declutters and tutorials and get ready with me's that's what we do over here as always be blessed and be kind you will see my hands again very very soon bye